A warm welcome, the Italian the VR. Today we are going to see how to set up Webpack Bundle Analyzer in our Next.js web application. In this how-to video, we will go straight to the point. So, enough said, time to code now. What AVR, open inside Visual Studio Code, is the simple bare-bones starter Next.js application given by the command npx create next app. So to bring the Webpack Bundle Analyzer tool inside our application, let's simply open the terminal and install the package we need. So npm install at next slash bundle analyzer press enter and let's wait for it to be installed. Now that this package is successfully installed, let's open the next.config.js and in here we will define a wrapper function that will wrap our next config object, this one defined up right here, and also will give us the possibility to enable or disable the webpack bundle analyzer tool. So simply type const with bundle analyzer is equal to require what the package we have just installed so at next bundle analyzer and then pass an object with the enabled property this is a boolean value that when process dot n dot analyze is equal to true and so this means that when this property will be equal to true, the bundle analyzer tool is enabled. So the last thing we need to do is to wrap our next config object with this function we have just created. So let's save. And now back in our integrated terminal, let's pass the analyze environment variable equal to true and then the command npm run build. So this will build our Next.js application and also run the Webpack Bundle Analyzer. And here we are. As you can see, the Webpack Bundle Analyzer is successfully set up in our Next.js application. And so the form tree map is generated, thanks which we can analyze our Next.js application and also interact with it. We have three metrics related to the tree map sizes. The stat1, that is the input size of our files before any transformation like minification has occurred. Then we have the parsed1, and this is related to the output size of our files. And the gzip1 is the matrix related to the size of the parsed bundle or modules that have passed through a gzip compression. Now let's run a simple and practical example in which we install the bootstrap module inside our Next.js application. And in base of how we import bootstrap in our web app, we will purposely tweak this value and see how they behave and how they show the metrics related to the bundle sides of our Next.js application. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and npm install bootstrap and sas. So let's close this next config.js, uh, navigate inside the page folder, inside index.js, let's remove all the three imports at the top then also this boilerplate code returned and simply let's return a div with a class name of container and then a simple button saying test with the class name of button button primary then inside our style folder Let's remove the two CSS file and create a new one, bootstrap.scss, in which we import the entire bootstrap module inside our application. So at import, up one folder, node modules, slash 
bootstrap slash scss slash bootstrap this set import directive will import the entire bootstrap module we are only use the container utility class and the button button primary utility class but we are not only importing the container and the button from bootstrap but we are importing the entire module so what we need to do then is simply to remove this import at the top and instead import what again styles folder slash bootstrap.scss now let's run this application npm run dev just to check that everything is working fine let's close this old webback bundle analyzer pages and as you can see bootstrap is correctly loaded inside our next.js application so we are displaying in a container our test button so we can now go back to visual studio code stop the running command and instead run again analyze equal true and then npm run build as i said this will build again our application and also run the bundle analyzer tool that will generate a form tree map that visually shows the bundle size of our application so this tree map is related to the server this one too and this is the client screen so here we can look for bootstrap and as you can see as you can see this is the visual representation of the map region related to the bootstrap.scss file if we over uh, on this region uh, an interactive pop-up menu will show up and all the three metrics we need are showing up so we have the stat size that remember this is related to the input size of the file we are giving to the bundle and this 193 kilobyte and remember we are now importing all the bootstrap module then we have the parsed size so this is the output file size and then we have the gzipped one now to tweak this value what we can do is to navigate back to visual studio code and let's comment this line now if we run again just to check that bootstrap is no more imported in our application as you can see we have an unstyled button so what we can do now instead of importing the entire module what we can do is to import only the let's say part we need from bootstrap so let's start at import app one directory node modules bootstrap scss functions then let's just copy paste this import then we need variables then maps and then mix ins then it's the time for root and re these are kind of must have import so to bring all the single components inside our next.js application so let's start from the containers since you remember we are using the container utility class and now if we go back to our application as you can see we have some style applied to the button and also this is displaying inside the container then we need to import the button scss module so here we have buttons 
and if we refresh our page as you can see we achieved the same result as before but the difference is we are not importing the entire bootstrap module inside our application but we are importing only the parts we need so now we can again go back to our integrated terminal stop the running command and again analyze equal to true and pm run build if you remember before our the file we were given as input was around 193 kilobyte and now this is these are the new three maps generated and now if we look again in, inside the client map we look again for bootstrap and here it's as you can see smaller because now the stat size so the input file the bootstrap.scss that we are given as input to webpack is only 17 kilobyte but the parsed size and the gzip size remain the same so it means that the only part that is changing is the input file that we are given to the bundler but then the bundler is able by itself to minify to reduce our bundle size out output and so to take all the css code that is needed to show what we have in our dom if you remember we have this button that is just exploiting the container and the button button primary utility classes given by bootstrap so we can close this tutorial and if you like this type of content please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel and bye bye the italian dev see you